statement of cash flows. We are doing chapter 20. We have 20 and 21 left. We're almost done. Hallelujah. All right. So the statement of cash flows, you've had it a few times now. We touched on it briefly in accounting 2301. I'm pretty sure we did it in 3311. And now we're really going to get into it in 3312. Maybe we didn't do it in 3311. I don't really remember, but I think we did briefly. And this chapter is a little more in depth. Okay. So, statement. Excuse me, I have the hiccups all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. Statement of cash flows. All right. It's one of the financial statements required by GAP. And if you remember the income statement, well, let me this, accrual accounting is used for the income statement and the balance sheet. All right, it shows us what we have earned and what we owe or have owed to us. But not much about cash flow. Okay, solvency means having the cash to pay debt when it falls due. And it's sometimes hard to tell that from looking at the, the accrual based income statement and balance sheet. I could be making tons, I could show making, I could be earning, I should put it that way, I could be earning tons of money and still not have much cash. And it's important that users of the financial statements, right, it, uh, investors, creditors, employees, vendors, whoever they may be, any of our stakeholders, it's important that they know that we're going to be able to pay our, you know, our bills and that we have the cash to pay our bills when they're due. And of course, you know, um, the book is going to have a lot of, of text on why we need the statement of cash flows and what shows up on it and what needs to be disclosed. And as usual, you need to read through all that. I'm going to focus on the highlights and the calculations of things. Okay, we already have that. All right, so the statement of cash flows has three sections, and the three sections are required by GASB. Three section GASB, I'm sorry, by GAP. <laughs> I'm going to say FASB. Kind of combine those two words there. Three sections are required on the statement of cash flows. All right, CF is cash flow. So statement of cash flows. And we're going to have the operating section. The investing section. and the financing section. And then at the end, we'll show the change in cash. And beginning and ending cash balances. giggling at my typos and I just realized that I posted lecture notes for my 2301 class and I forgot to spell check them. Wonder what all fun things are in there that are misspelled. Okay, so a little bit more detail on each section. All right, the operating section basically converts the income statement. All right, and that income to a cash basis. All right, so to do that, 
it considers cash collected from customers. Cash paid to, you know, um, to vendors for your cost of goods sold. Cash paid to employer, employees, sorry. Cash paid for operation, operating expenses, you know, et cetera. So it, you know, it, it, it can, it considers the cash received and paid with respect to various components of the income statement. All right, so it basically starts with the income statement. And adds or subtracts changes to operating assets and liabilities. All right, the investing section. The investing section looks at cash received and paid for long term, All right. or sometimes you'll hear it called non-current assets. All right, so this is going to be plant and equipment. long-term uh, security investments, long-term note receivables, or I'm just gonna say note receivables actually. All right, and you'll have cash in and out with respect to all of those. And then the financing section, section, <laughs> I have a hard time saying that. The financing section looks at cash received and paid with respect to long-term or non-current debt and equity. Okay, so it looks at things like notes payable, bonds payable, you know, any type of long-term debt. Issuance of stock. Purchase of treasury stock, payment of dividends, stuff like that. All right, then typically you'll also have a separate schedule non-cash investing and financing activities. Okay, and you notice these are things over here like, like you um, buy an asset in return for equity security. So you basically gave somebody shares of your stock in return for a building, or you bought a building or a long-term asset using a liability. All right, so all those type of exchanges, they'll, they'll affect cash flow in the future. So they end up showing up on a non-cash investing and financing schedule. All right, so you might need to be familiar with the term cash and cash equivalents. 
that's usually what we're trying to determine um, where the ch how the change in those accounts is initiated. All right, cash equivalents. Well, cash is cash. Um, cash equivalents are highly liquid. Investments. All right, so these are things like treasury bills. They're basically short-term notes to the government, and they pay you back pretty fast. Commercial paper, same thing but with corporations, and money market accounts. All right, they're, they're highly liquid, and you get your money from them very fast. All right, so here's what a statement of cash flows basically looks like. They have like a whole one. Okay, so this is the operating section. I'm gonna, I think I might just copy it over. So are we doing it all? Maybe I won't. Oh, dude. I'm gonna just do this. Okay, so I ended up just typing it over and copying it so that um, I could just talk about it right here instead of going back and forth from the PowerPoints. And I made it a little, I made it a little smaller to view so we could see the whole thing. Uh, hopefully y'all can see it, but you can certainly make it bigger when you go to look at the notes. Okay, so statement of cash flows has the you know basic title at the top. It's for the year ended. All right, we have the three sections: operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Okay, we end up with a net increase in cash down here at the bottom, which is one of the things we're trying to get to. Okay, so. This particular one is done, this particular example uses the indirect method for the operating section. And we'll talk more about that later. But I know that it uses the indirect method because it starts with net income, all right? And then it adds or subtracts, you know, various items. So it starts off by adding back non-cash items while adding or subtracting non-cash items. In this case, we're adding back depreciation expense and we're subtracting out a gain on the sale of land. <clears throat> and we'll get into more of how to get the numbers in another video. All right. Then we have, you know, the additions or subtractions for changes in working capital items. These are your um, current assets and current liabilities, generally speaking. All right, so working capital items are current assets and current liabilities. Although typically we refer to them at this point in your accounting career as operating assets and liabilities. Because you might actually have a few current assets and current liabilities that you don't include in this section because they're not operating assets and liabilities. So we'll get into that a little bit later on. All right. Um, and then we end up with net cash provided by operations. All right. It's provided because it's a positive number. And we just added all these up. All right. Investing activities. We paid some money for a building. We paid some money for some equipment. And we sold some land. This is the full amount of cash paid or received for buying or selling, you know, uh, long-term investments or such as these assets. All right, so we add them up. We actually end up with a net cash used because it's a negative number by investing activities. All right, and then for financing activities, we issued some stock, we issued some bonds, we paid dividends, and then we made a payment on a note payable. All right, so it ends up being a positive cash provided by financing activities. All right, then you add those three together
Yeah, what is happening? All right, you add these three together. All right, you add to find the net increase or decrease in cash. Okay, so this number right here. Okay, then these two numbers, we have the cash at the beginning of the year, and if you add it to the increase or decrease, it should give you cash at the end of the year. And remember that those two numbers should tie These two numbers right here. All right, these should tie to the cash balance, oops, the cash balance on the balance sheet. Okay, and that's kind of how you know that everything worked out because you know what, you know what these numbers need to be so you'll know if you did this up here correctly or not because of these numbers down here. Okay, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say about this, but I don't remember what it was. All right, well, anyway, that's the first video in the basics about the statement of cash flows. So in videos to come, we'll prepare the statement of cash flows and we'll talk about why we're adding and subtracting. Um, these numbers up here, we're going to prepare the operating section using the indirect method and then also the direct method. We will do both ways. All right, investing and financing, this is how you do it. All right, there is no other way to do those two. But the operating section has two different methods. And basically, you really have to do both ways because you have to, if you use the direct method, then in the notes, you still have to reconcile net income to net cash provided. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Okay, when you're looking at the statement of cash flows, the most important section is probably the operating section. All right, so and by most important, I mean for generation of cash flow. Most important section for providing cash is the operating section. All right, because that's the whole reason we're in business. If we can't generate a positive cash flow from operations, if we can't sustain that through the years, then we're probably not going to stay in business because we have to use this money to buy equipment. We have to use it to pay off debt, pay dividends, things of that nature. So that operating section is probably the most important section um, that needs a positive cash flow, you know, consistently year after year. All right, the invest investing section. This really could go either way. For new companies, will probably be negative. As they are buying new equipment and whatnot. All right, but then as they mature, it, it could, you know, go either way as they mature. Financing section also could go either way. New companies it will probably be positive as they are borrowing money. issuing stock. Mature companies might be negative as they are paying off debt and paying dividends. But they could still be borrowing money, so you know, it might just kind of go either way too. Okay, that's what I wanted to add in there. See you on the next video.